Ezekiel. Ezekiel 37, 1 through 14. The Valley of Dry Bones. The power of the Lord came over me. The Lord brought me out by his spirit and put me down in the middle of the valley. The valley was filled with bones. He led me all around them. I saw that there were very many bones at the bottom of the valley, and they were very dry. Then he asked me, Son of man, can these bones be alive? I answered, Only you know, Almighty Lord. Then he said to me, Prophecy to these, to the, to these bones, tell them dry bones. Listen to the Lord's word. This is what the Almighty Lord says to these bones. I will call the breath to enter you, and you will live. I will put, I will put ligaments on you, place muscles on you, and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will live. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. While I was prophesying, <coughs> suddenly there was a rattling noise, and the bones came together, one bone attaching itself to another. As I looked, I saw the ligaments were on them, muscles were on them, and skin covered them, yet there was no breath in them. Then the Lord said to me, Prophecy to the breath, Prophecy, son of man, Tell the breath, this is what the Almighty Lord says. Come from the fourth winds, breath and breath on, on these people who were killed so that they were, will live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath entered them. Then they came to life and stood on their feet. There were enough of them to form a very large army. Lord has also said to me, Son of man, all the people of Israel are like these bones. The people say, Our bones are dry and our hope has vanished. We are completely destroyed. So prophecy, tell them, this is what the Almighty Lord said. My people, I will open your graves and take you out of them. I will bring you to Israel. Then, my people, you will know that I am the Lord, because I will open your graves and bring you out of your grave. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live. I will place you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, done it, declares the Lord. And now, sisters and brothers, in your worship folder, will you join with me in reading John 10.10 10 together? The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this day and as we begin a new ministry in the life of our church this journey for the formation of our spiritual lives. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our Lord, and our love. Amen. 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 Church, what first comes to your mind when we think about bones? Some minds quickly think of the kitchen. We envision fish bones, chicken bones, and if you came from Syracuse, New York, where we bleed, Pat and Carl, orange and blue, not your little miners thing there. <laughs> we have a place that was called Dim Barbecue Dinosaur, Dinosaur Barbecue. I don't know, I ate there so much, I thought I was always eating barbecue. But I would say that we were always eating the wonderful ribs from Dinosaur Barbecue. Others would think of the songwriter's suggestion to shake your hips and let your backbone slip. When you say bone, there are some who think of the long skeletal shapes on the playing board and their minds fall on the game of dominoes where each playing piece is called a bone. If you would talk to my mother about bones, she would also get so excited about the TV show Bones that comes on Fox that she will <laughs> stop talking to me and my brother. She leaves my dad alone and she says, I have to go, I'll be right back. And we all know she's going to go watch the show Bones. And then she comes out after and she says, oh, that was great. And I'm like, where have you been? Oh my gosh. But sisters and brothers, bones in the real sense are the parts of the skeletal system of humans and other vertebrate animals. The human body has hundreds of bones that provide shape and form for our bodies as well as life-giving blood for our survival. 
Red blood cells which deliver oxygen and pick up waste from the various cells of the body are produced inside of the bones. Without bones, the marrow of which replaces the two million red blood cells that die every second, life would not continue very long. Man has attempted to imitate God and has created artificial limbs and bones. There are legs that walk, there are fingers that point, and there are arms that move. What man has not been able to create is the marrow within the bone that produces life-giving blood cells. Church, without that life-giving ability, bones are just hollow frames that provide structure and form, but are unable to sustain life. Say amen, somebody. Amen. You got to talk with me, okay? All right, back and forth. You got that? All right. Thank you. Sisters and brothers, when bones can no longer produce blood, they are what the Bible describes as dry bones. The Spirit of God is the life force, the motivator, the inspirational generator of our world. He is the source of new growth, fresh ideas, encouragement, and strength that keeps us living day by day. When we fail to let him control our lives, we have structure and form, but no life. Homes once lively filled with love become houses. Marriages once satisfying and beautiful becomes prisons. Churches that fail to follow the Spirit of God keep their structure and form, but loses the power that comes from the blessing of God himself. Amen. I ask you the question this morning, Trinity First, can such dry bones live again? The answer is only if they return to the word of the Lord each and every day. Church, real quick this morning, the text focuses and cons on Israel that was in exile. The nation once foreshadowed as one of the richest and strongest nations of the region had been reduced to slave status. Church, though many prophets such as Isaiah and Jeremiah had warned them of the fall of the nation if it continued to ignore the will of God rather than fall in love with God again, they were, what I would say, pending a great fall. They were a nation, but a scattered, defeated nation. They were hopeless and traveled a windy path of grief and despair. Their hijackers, sisters and brothers, mocked them regularly to sing us one of Zion's songs. Discouraged, they hung their harps on the hollow trees and responded, how can we sing Zion's song in such a strange land? The Lord gave the prophet Ezekiel a message of encouragement for Israel while it was at the lowest point of their time in the form of a vision of a valley filled with broken and scattered and disordered dry bones. God asked Ezekiel a question, Son of man, can these bones live? And Ezekiel's response was, Thou knowest. Can these bones, which according to verse 11, symbolize the entire house of Israel, ever be restored to their former glory? Israel suffered from three split illnesses. They were broken, separated each other from their parts, and they had lost all of their hope. They described themselves as dry bones. <clears throat> what made them dry might be the question of many of you today. Not that they were broken, because broken bones can be reset in a matter of weeks and will rekindle themselves. Not that they, sisters and brothers, were separated or transplanted, because even them, they can be successfully healed again. What made Israel dry was that it was without hope. If the narrow, sisters and brothers, of the bone is the catalyst for the creation of new red blood cells for the body, then I have come to the fight the conclusion hope is the marrow of our spiritual existence as Christians. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Sisters and brothers, hope keeps us going because it transcends present circumstances and creates positive images within our life. On Monday, Hope may paint a picture of future happiness for our family. 
But before the day ends, restless relations destroy it. But while you sleep at night, hope creates another masterpiece. Tuesday may be destroyed again, but it keeps recreating itself of images of how it can be. When hope is lost, sisters and brothers, you wake up one morning and you can't see the picture. You can't see things getting any better. You can't see the way out. When Israel reached this point, they said our bones are dry and our hope is lost. Well, I come to let you know this morning that without hope, mountains seem impossible to climb. Without hope, valleys seem too wide to span. Without hope, burdens seem too heavy to bear. Without hope, problems seem impossible to solve. I heard the songwriter say, I have hope when trouble comes my way. It's a beautiful hope that sets me free. The tragedy of Israel's condition was not so much that they were scattered, but they had lost their hope. Every child of God whose faith is in Jesus Christ should be able to say, despite the disappointments of this moment, I still have hope. So turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. All right, we've done this before, and I don't know why you all act like we don't do this again. So turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. So you didn't do it right. You didn't do it right. Okay. <laughs> it, 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 exactly, kind of, exactly. That's right. So turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Now look at my mouth. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Without hope. Without hope. We can't do nothing. We can't do nothing. Now turn to someone else. Uh-huh, yes, yeah, start talking to your neighbor. That's right, that's right. Say neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Without hope, we can't do nothing. Sisters and brothers, I have hope that encourages me despite the fear. I have hope that strengthens me in the time of weaknesses. I have hope that assures me in times of anxiety. I have hope that guides me in the time of wondering. I have hope that comforts me in the time of sorrow. I have hope, sisters and brothers, that Jesus Christ will heal me right where I am. Amen. On yesterday afternoon, while finishing my sermon, I received a telephone call from my mother. And whenever you receive a call from your mother, your heart just drops just a tad bit. Amen. There's not nothing where she's checking on you to see how you're doing, but either she wants you to do something, or there is news that needs to be shared. And on yesterday, she shared with me that within an hour of one another, I lost my great aunt Mary, and I lost my uncle Bruce. Two siblings in two different hospitals with two totally different issues and problems that was only discovered on yesterday morning. Sisters and brothers, as I began to complete this sermon, I began to think about Aunt Mary and what she meant to me. I think about when I gave my life to Christ to become a pastor at the annual conference. And Tom knows when you're there, there's all these people looking at you and the bishops extend the invitation to come forward. And there was Aunt Mary, I didn't even know she was there, but she was there with these big arms to hug me. And she said, Dee, your hope is built on nothing less. And tears began to fall. And sisters and brothers, I began to understand that our hope here at Trinity First is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. We dare not trust the sweetest frame, but we're going to wholly lean on Jesus' name. For on the Christ, the solid rock we stand, all of the ground are sinking sand. Sisters and brothers, our text this morning presents us with an answer of hopelessness. It gives us a graphic example of hope lost and hope being restored. God told Ezekiel that the solution to Israel's problem was in listening and believing the word of the Lord. Ezekiel found himself in a valley filled with dry bones. God told Ezekiel to stand in the middle of those bones and declare the word of the Lord. Don't expect much support or amen from these bones, God said, but they will cry out and they will form themselves because God has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit. Oh, ye dry bones, hear ye the word of the Lord. Members of Trinity First this day, I tell you to keep the vision clear and hold 
fast to the course huh? because God is still on the throne, not you. So say amen, somebody. Amen. You may not like it, but there it is. Praise man, worship leaders, choir members, keep singing the songs of Zion because God still lives. God is here. He is a very present help in the time of our need. Members in the following train, keep your hand wrapped in the winding chain. And remember the song that my great grandmother Carrie would sing some nights. To me, she would say, Dear charge to keep I have a God to glorify, an ever dying soul to save, and fit it for the sky. Sisters and brothers, can you imagine the conversation? of the meeting of the bones that took place that day when Ezekiel prophesied to them what God had said. The foot and ankle and leg bone met saying, we've been walking separate paths, but hope has been restored and God will direct us from his word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. They met with the knee bone saying, we work together in times past. Let's get together for the work of God. And God says to us, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. They met with the thigh and the hip bone saying, we've been walking separate paths uh, and we've been sitting down. Let's move out and do great things for the Lord. They met with the shoulder and the neck bone saying, we need you to help us shoulder this load. We walk separate paths. And we're on our way to Canaan land. They began the walk of what we used to call in our Methodist church up the King's Highway. We would sing it so proudly as children and we would twist in and we would say, I'm going up the King's Highway. We're heaven bound. We're doing work for Jesus Christ. Uh, they called out sisters and brothers, but we need a head to lead us. So they began to call the head bone, and they said, head bone, come on over and give us the vision from on high. For church, we must be reminded of John 10.10 10, when Jesus tells us, I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. We here at Trinity First have been a set of dry bones for far too many years. We have not taken an example in the look of our daily disciplines of God. But sisters and brothers, I'm here to let you know that we're on this journey together because we can live. We are not dead. So say amen, somebody. Amen. When we hear the word of the Lord to the bones, we get some new hope. We get some new energy within us because we know that we are children of the Most High God. We can live. We live because He lives. Amen. Amen. And because He lives, we can face tomorrow. Knowing that Jesus died, that I might have eternal life, sisters and brothers, I pledged at a very young age of 13 years old to be a disciple and to witness his saving grace and seeking to follow his teachings under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I faithfully pledge my time, I pledge my skills, my resources, and my strength to search out God's will for me and to obey. Sisters and brothers, if you think being saved at 27 is easy, you have something else coming. If you think being a pastor at 27 is easy, please think again. <laughs> but because I decided to give Jesus my hand, there is no turning back now. Amen. We used to sing in the black church, I've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. Oh, I won't turn around. Because what does this world have to profit me that God can't give? Once you find out, you let me know, and we'll have a great cup of tea, and we'll go over it. <laughs> Church, we must keep the commitment and the covenant that we made when we excited about Jesus Christ coming into our lives. We must worship each Sunday regardless of our dislikes, our upsets, and our disappointments with one another. We must continue to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion because it reminds us of what Jesus Christ did for us on that night. We must pray each day privately with our family and with our friends. We must read and study the scriptures each day. We must return to Christ for verse 10 of all that we receive because it is not ours, it is his. 
We must spend time each month to further the cause of disadvantages in our community of a Passover. We must spend time, sisters and brothers, praying to God and listening to the Holy Spirit on what direction we must follow in this life. We must make this commitment, trusting in the grace of God, to give us the will and the strength to keep these values and to live life more abundantly. Trinity First, our time under God is now. These dry bones that once were dead are going to be resurrected again if I have anything to do with it while I'm here. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. You didn't do it right. You're going to do it again. Neighbor. <laughs> neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Can these dry bones live? Can these dry bones live? And turn to someone else and say, yes. Yes. 